Hi there, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, this video is actually um, sparked by a film called Sexy Beast and it's one of my favorite films and I, I just caught it um, online recently and it just kind of sparked um, the, a strangler's frenzy within me and let me explain. You know the opening scene of the, the film actually features uh, the song Peaches by the Stranglers and it, it's actually uh, very funny. You've got to, to watch the clip. Uh, I've put the link uh, below and you can check it out there. So I, I, I just thought, gosh, the Stranglers, one of my favorite 80s bands, and you know, I hadn't heard their songs in a long time, right? So I, I, I started pulling out all my Strangler LPs and, and just, just having a bit of a Stranglers marathon and listening to it all. And then this is what prompted me to, to do this video. So I just wanted to share with you some of my favorite LPs that I have in my collection, some of my favorite songs. The first album that I absolutely love is their first debut album. It's called Radicus Norvegicus. So I hope I pronounced that properly. So there you go. So this LP has the song Peaches and uh, and that's the one that was uh, in the film Sexy Beast. Uh, that song is also in commercials and, and whatnot. So you've probably heard it before. If you, if you think you've never heard it, it you probably have. So um, I have to say I'm very squeamish, squeamish about rats. Um, I don't know why. It never bothered me before. So this is their 1977 debut album. You know, they were uh, known as a punk rock group at that time, right? And I watched an interview of uh, Hugh Cornwell, uh, the former uh, lead singer and band member of The Stranglers, and apparently he revealed that the band, which started in 1980, uh, 1974, they actually started out as like a, a, a soft rock pop band and uh, he talks about how they were performing and the audience just didn't react to them and in fact he said that the uh, you know they they were getting stuff thrown at them at the stage and that's when they or he, according to uh, Hugh Cornwell decided that they would uh, do what the audience wanted and at that time punk was big so they decided to become a punk band so, so the second Stranglers LP I have is No More Heroes there you go no More Heroes, that song and the title of this album, that is a, like, considered one of the uh, punk anthems of all time, right? And what I like about The Stranglers is that, and I didn't realize it then, but I realize it now, uh, after like re-listening to, to their music, is that a lot of their songs, you know, they're, in general, that is, you know, they, they've got a nice kind of catchy beat, uh, rhythm to it, and, you know, what they're singing about is actually quite, quite deep and quite heavy and, and sometimes quite dark. And, you know, I find that that's quite uh, typical of uh, British bands, and they just have a way, in, in, you know, uh, sounding cheerful, but yet yeah, singing about something that's quite um, important, profound, or, you know, thought-provoking. Thought I should actually... Um, mentioned the original lineup of the Stranglers, okay? So it's uh, Hugh Cornwell, he's the guitarist and, vo and he does vocals. Jean-Jacques Burnell, he does, he's the bassist and, vo and he does vocals. And then you have uh, Dave Greenfield, uh, keyboards and vocals, and then Jet Black, drums and percussion. So the latter two, sadly, they, they passed away uh, in the past few years. So uh, the only original band member uh, playing in uh, The Stranglers is uh, Jean-Jacques Brunel. Yeah, let me just show you the, the actual label. It's quite nice. It's um, wonderful. You've got the, the nice artwork there. So that was in 1977. That album came out five months after uh, Raticus Norvegicus because um, that album, it featured like four leftover songs from their debut album. I think it's worth mentioning that uh, the Stranglers, they did a punk cover version of uh, Burt Bacharach's Walk On By. You know, it's, it's Dionne Warwick's signature song, but honestly, the Stranglers, they really kill it with their cover. The song actually came, I believe, as a, like a 45 single that was inserted in their, their album called Black and White. This came out in 1981, um, uh, and this is called La Folie. 
La Foley, La Foley. The big hit from this album is Golden Brown. And it's an incredible song. I love it, love it, love it. The label is lovely and it's got like this heart artwork on there. And I've just got to show you the, the, the inner sleeve. This artwork of a heart. And then you've got some wonderful uh, imagery on the back side. According to Hugh Cornwell, he talked about how that song is about um, well, heroin and a girl. And apparently uh, that song went uh, to number two and he, he said that he felt that it could have gone to number one in the UK charts, but what happened was uh, he said that the, the bassist, J.J. Brunel, uh, Jean-Jacques Brunel, he uh, let it slip to the press that it was about heroin. So once that got out, uh, broadcasters um, in the UK, they pulled, they pulled that song out of their playlist. So, you know, if you're not playing the song, that means it's going to affect your sales, right? And for me, Listening to it again, I actually thought that it had some sound of uh, Take 5, Dave Brubeck Quartet's Take 5, right, in the beginning. And I thought, is it just me? Or I wonder if other people can hear it. So I uh, went online and I, I Googled and I went and went on YouTube. And, you know, other people kind of made that connection. And there's this incredible video, uh, this musician, sex, uh, saxophonist, he actually does a cover of Golden Brown in the, in the style of the Dave Brubeck Quartet. And it's incredible. I really love the Baroque sound of a harpsichord. So for Golden Brown uh, to incorporate that, you know, into uh, the Stranglers incorporating that into the song, I thought that was just really cool. And the only other song that I could think of that had that, the harpsichord sound or the use of the actual instrument was uh, Simon and Garfunkel's uh, Scarborough Fair, right? And, you know, I thought about, you know, are there other songs that actually use uh, the harpsichord, right? I thought about it and then after having a look online, there are apparently uh, three other modern songs that use um, the this 16th century uh, musical instrument, right? So the songs are Monday Monday by the Mamas and Papas, Got to Be There by Michael Jackson, and MacArthur Park, the album version by Richard Harris. This has to be like my favorite Stranglers LP, Oral Sculpture. My favorite on here is Skin Deep and I just loved it. And I remember hearing Skin Deep on um, the Quake uh, radio station. And it was, I just absolutely went crazy over it. And it's the usual, you know, you, you wait until the song's finished and then, you know, you want to find out who sang that song, what the title of the song was. And, you know, again, once I found out who it was, you know, I, I rushed down to the record shop, got the LP, and uh, the radio station actually played the extended version of Skin Deep. And it is really great, you know. Um, so I went and also got the maxi single. And they're, the, all these tracks are really, really great. The song, um, No Mercy, I only learned recently, it's about uh, Jean-Jacques Brunel's father who was very ill at the time. So this LP came out in um, 1984. And then when you watch the video of No Mercy, you know, it's, it's set in a hospital, right? And all the band members are in uh, hospital gowns and whatnot. So uh, now it makes sense, you know, when you read about, you know, the, the stories behind the songs, I think it's quite interesting. Just like um, Skin Deep, apparently that's about uh, Hugh Cornwell's, um, I mean, someone he stepped out with and he was having a difficult relationship. So here's No Mercy, the maxi single there. Skin Deep. So you got Let Me Down Easy. This LP, Dream Time, this came out in 1986. So the big hit here is uh, Always the Sun, right? It's fantastic. And 
uh, Nice in Nice. That's quite a fun song. I got the maxi single for Nice in Nice. I had a listen of uh, their, well, latest or, or newest album, which came out in 2021, and it's called Dark Matters. The music's fantastic. Um, I was really lucky to get um, this LP. It's still sealed. It's brand new. When Hugh left, I was crestfallen because I was such a big fan of The Stranglers. Um, I love his voice. And I really thought that would be the end of The Stranglers. But, you know, The Stranglers, they've gone on, they've continued, they've thrived, and they're so successful. And I'm really, I, I'm just so won over by uh, Baz Warren's uh, vocal and uh, guitar skills. And that guy is just, uh, he's killing it on stage and he's incredible. So I follow the Stranglers um, on social media and it's really exciting to see them going from strength to strength. That's the rundown of my favorite Stranglers LPs and songs. They have a huge catalog of material and if you have a particular one that you uh, love and you got a story behind it uh, please do drop me a line because uh, I, I just I just love hearing what other people's experiences are with their songs and their favorites and oh I want to say that um, uh, thank you very much for the feedback from some of you um, about my glasses uh, I didn't realize that there was a glare from the light so this is why this video I thought okay I'm gonna take the glasses off and hopefully that's you know you don't have the glare to annoy you so so anyhow all the same I, I appreciate your feedback it, it's really helpful and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again Music